math point five inequalities. You're supposed to learn how to graph something like x is greater than one in your algebra class, but if you don't remember, then the graph looks like this. And since it's greater than one, then that means it doesn't include this point here at one, so it should be a hollow circle looking like that. But you could also do that with a decimal calculator by doing x greater than one and you would see this and this look may not look like this right away but if you imagine that you're just looking at this horizontal uh, line here then at x equals one there's a dashed line so that means it's hollow that means it doesn't include the one value here and then it's everything on the right so this kind of look like this here and so we won't go through these um, you can just graph them and, and know how they look like so here is a SAT question, which of the following number line represents solution set of 2x minus 1 greater than 3. And you can solve this the math way, but for time's sake, let's just do it with a decimals calculator and see how that looks like. So 2x minus 1 greater than 3. And immediately we have this graph here. And this, based on this, this looks the most like choice C where it's shaded starting from 2, and it's a dashed line, so it's hollow. And among these, only choice C has this line here with a hollow point on the x equals 2 value. If you remember how to do it the math way, then go ahead and do it the math way as you learn it in your math class. If not, then just graph it, and you get the answer right away, like so. John has $80 originally and sells artworks for $25 a piece. What is the minimum pieces of artwork John needs to sell in order to purchase an iPhone that costs $843? And when you're solving math questions with a paragraph, it's always good to first think about what this means in common English. Okay, so John has $80. Um, and he is selling, he's making money by selling artwork for this much money. And ultimately, he wants to buy an iPhone that costs this much money. And if you think about what this means, for every artwork that he's selling, he's making $25. So um, if the uh, formula or the question is confusing in the beginning, it can be helpful for you to think about how it looks like. Walk through a few examples and see if you see a pattern. And let's do that. Originally, John has original. John has $80, and then he sells one artwork. He now has $80 plus $25. And then if he has two artworks, that would be $80 plus 25 plus 25, or you can think of that as 25 times two. And if, if he sells three artworks, then that would be 85 uh, 80 plus 25 times 3 artwork, and so on and so forth. Hopefully by this point, you will see that there's a pattern here. And the pattern is, it's starting with 80, and for every artwork, he is selling an extra 25. Uh, he's making an extra $25. So an expression to show this for um, how, how much money he has based on how many artwork he sells is 80 is where he's starting off. And he's making an additional 25 times the number of artwork that he's selling. So for one artwork, that's 25 times one. For two, that's 25 times two. And this here looks just like this. And this is the money that John has. And it's saying that he's trying to buy an iPhone. But with one artwork, he has 85 plus, uh, 80 plus 25, that's $105. That's not enough to buy an iPhone. This is also not enough to buy an iPhone, and so on and so forth. So in just pure common English, what the question is saying is how many artworks that he needs to sell um, to, so that he has enough money for buying an iPhone. Okay? But um, you know, if you say, well, what if he sells like a million iPhones? Then of course, with, by selling a million iPhones, he has enough money to buy, or sorry, by selling a million art pieces, he would have enough money to buy the iPhone. But that's where the minimum comes in. Minimum means, um, you know, without selling a million artwork, could he sell like 50 artwork? Is that enough? Could he sell 30? Could he sell 12? And you're trying to find that minimum amount uh, so that he's making just enough money for $843.
So we can graph that also. We can graph 80 plus 25x. This is how much money he has. And we should start from, I'm going to make the adjustment and make the x-axis start at 0. Okay? And 0 means the um, x is the number of artwork that he's selling. So at the very beginning, he um, that's how much money he has. And here, let's set that to uh, 30 for now, because we don't know how many uh, artwork he's selling. And step is 1 for showing that uh, for every one, it's not the group minor grid line, for every uh, one uh, unit, in the grid, that means that's one extra artwork. For the y-axis, um, we can start with zero and so let's say a hundred. Okay, and this line here is showing you how much money he has. It's starting with eighty for uh, no artwork, one one piece of artwork. He is selling, uh, he's making, or he has in total more than a hundred dollars. And so this being a hundred wouldn't be useful because he already has more than a hundred by the time he sold one artwork. Um, if you think about it, this is, um, he's ultimately trying to have as much as eighty, uh, $843. So maybe we can make the Y value, Y label here, as 843. Okay. And we can see how much that is. Well, it's kind of in the way. We can't really see that. Um, we can't see how much that is. It's looks like it's around 30 so I'm gonna make the adjustment here a little bit and we'll go a little bit beyond 843 let's say 900 so that's um, easier to see and okay so somewhere around hmm, being blocked by the menu here uh, somewhere here uh, right there is 800 and uh, 30 something. Um, maybe we should make the x-axis a little bit bigger. Okay, now it's more visible. So you can drag this around and we'll set the step of step is one. Um, you can try try to see at which point is um, 843. So 843 happens at this let's see right 843 drag it slowly and we see 843 right here okay all right so by looking at the graph you know that um by the time uh john sells 30.52 uh, number of pieces of artwork he would have in total 843 dollars but because the number of art piece that he has cannot be that he sells cannot be a decimal number, that means he needs to sell at least uh, thirty one art piece. If it's thirty, then that's below the money that he needs. Thirty one is just enough art piece uh, to to sell in order to have this much money. By looking at the graph, you know the answer is um, eight hundred and uh, or was it uh, thirty thirty one? I think. Let's take a look at this again. 843 and yeah so 30 point something so it's 31 what you could also do is you're looking for the value the total value of 843 you're looking for something below this line by drawing this line you get that point much quicker than just trying to um, drag your cursor around and find that point okay, so the intersection is 30.52 so it's just above that is how much he needs to sell, so at least 31. The answer is 31. Here's a point. Uh, when you are when you multiply inequality with a negative number, um, for example, what we're trying to show here is if you, if you have an equality that looks like... Um, let's say... Um, 30 minus x minus 2x is less than um, negative x. Well, uh, let's make that negative four x, and let's make that yeah negative two x or negative x. If you have this, and later on, the the math way to solve this is you would add three uh, add x on both sides. This would end up with thirty is less than 
negative uh, 3x. And um, in order to simplify and isolate the x, you need to divide negative 3 on both sides. So when you're multiplying an inequality with a negative number, then you need to um, flip the inequality. So this would end up with 10 is not less than x um, or minus uh, times negative, uh, divide by negative 3. So this would be negative 10. So this is not negative 10 is less than x. This would be negative x is greater than x. So that means x has to be less than negative 10. So for example, x can be, uh, say, like negative 20. And by plugging in here and check, negative 3 times negative 20, that gets you positive 60. And positive 60 is indeed uh, greater than 30, or 30 is less than 60. So th this is what flipping the inequality means. If you have this, then multiplying this uh, both sides by negative 3, you need to also change this from less than to greater than. Uh, and if this is less than or equal to, then this would be greater than or equal to. Um, that's the, the math way. But again, if you have a decimals calculator, then perhaps typing in the equation into decimals and just find the value, that might be a faster way. And so you might not need to know that much math in order to do well on the SAT. We'll do a couple practice questions here and we'll leave the rest for you to do them. Um, a clothing store is having a sale on shirts and pants. During the sale, the cost of each shirt is $15, and the cost of each pair of pants is $25. And it's good to think about what the question is saying. So you have a clothing store, and the clothing store is selling shirts and pants. It's selling two things. And it seems like the S stands for shirt, and the P stands for pants. So it's selling two things. The cost of each shirt is 15 And what does that mean? That means in the very beginning, when you don't buy anything, then uh, if Jeff buys S shirts and P pairs of pants, then hum, which is the following must be true. If Jeff buys no pants and no shirts, then that would be zero dollars. If Jeff buys one shirt, then that would be 15. If he buys two shirt, that would be 15 times two. If he buys three, 15 times three and so on. So hopefully you are able to see that a um, representation for how much Jeff spends on shirt would be 15 times S, and S is the number of shirts that Jeff buys. Applying the same logic, $25 for each pants, and if Jeff buys P pairs of pants, then the total cost for the pants would be 25 times P. And this represents the money that Jeff needs to spend. Here are the sentences that Jeff can spend at most $120 at the store. That means he cannot spend more than 120. So if he cannot spend more than 120, that means he needs to spend less than 120. And it's at most. So that means including 120, he can, uh, 120 is a possible amount that he spends, but it can also be less. So this would be less than, and less than or equal to 120. And this equation is, let's take a look here, 25p plus 15 is less than, so it looks like it's the right answer is A here. Okay, number two, Michaela is planning an event in a 5,400 square foot room. If there should be at least eight, foot, eight square feet per person, what is the maximum number of people that could attend this event? First, think about what the question is saying. Michaela is planning an event at this large room and there should be room for each person. And each person should be at least eight square feet per person. And this is in total 54 square foot room. So graphically, if it helps, you can draw graphs. Uh, this is the, the size of the room and each person takes up some kind of space in the room. So this is one person. This is the next person and so on, is how much room they take up. Each of these uh, rectangle is eight square feet. And the question says, what is the maximum number of people that could attend this event? So how many of these um, rectangles can you fit inside here? 
So the math would be 5400 and each uh, each of these rectangle is 8 square feet. So that gets us 5400 divided by 8 that gets us 675. This question is oddly um, easy because I thought the question would be you end up with like a decimal number and with a decimal number then it's kind of tricky about whether you round down or round up. So let me change this question a bit. So this question is too, too easy. The answer is B, 675. But what if the question here is if there should be at least uh, 11 square feet per person? Then what is the maximum number of people that could attend this event? So you divide this by 11 and you end up with this, with this number, 490.9. Is the right answer 490? Or would you round up and get 491? And the answer will then be, um, think about it, if it's 490, then if it's 490, that means this is the total size of the room and there are 490 people in the room, then each person um, has 11.02 square feet per person. And that's okay. That's what you're looking for. You want at least 11 per person and you have 11.0, so this is okay. 3,400 divided by 491 ends up with less than 11. And this is not okay because you want at least 11 square feet. So in this case, the right answer would be 490. You want the rounded down number. And sometimes it's rounded down, sometimes it's rounded up. Um, but you kind of need to think about the, what the question is saying and think about the situation. Do you want um, to round down and have like a little bit extra here? Or do you want to round up and kind of like not make it to 11? Um, that's the, the, the logic that you have to think about. But for this one, you want enough space. So you want the number to be at least 11. So 11.02 is what you're looking for and the number is 490. We'll do one more. In the xy plane, point A is contained in the graph. So here's point A is in the graph of the solution set of the inequality above, which is the following could be the coordinates of point A. Okay, so you have y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 11. It's always easy to graph first. And the second graph here is y is greater than 3x minus 9. Okay, so we have these two and you're looking for solution of the system. Solution means something that works for both the blue and the red, so obviously it's this region here, the overlap region. Um, can point A is contained in the graph, and point A is a point in this graph. 2 comma 1, label it, it's right here, it's not in this area. 4 comma 1, is here also not in this region we can kind of just look and know where it is but say if you don't know how where the points are located four comma five is within this region the overlap region so the answer is c and if you plug in d six comma six you're going to find out that this point is um, outside of the the overlap region so the answer is c all right so here we've gone over a few strategies the first one, the first two is about thinking about what the question is asking and uh, make sense of it um, and then coming up with an equation for number one. Number two is thinking about the situation and know that you need to divide by eight, but you also need to think about whether you should round up or down. Uh, in the original question, it doesn't matter because you only have one number, but if it's something that doesn't uh, divide completely, then you have to think if it's um, maximum or minimum and whether you should round up or down so there's some kind of thinking involved for that and for number three it's about graphing the inequality and just look at the shaded region and know which point is inside or outside go ahead and do the rest and if you have any questions let us know i'll see you in the next lesson bye